But the boldest attempt to harness the energy and enthusiasm of the people came in 1958. To speed up progress, Mao wanted to use the force he believed in most, China's sheer numbers, for his great leap forward. Propaganda cartoons showed how the Chinese were meant to overtake Western industry and food production. Land so ceremoniously given to the peasants after the revolution was now taken back and the peasants were herded into huge communes. District Secretary Jin Guadong oversaw the operation in his area. I was responsible for setting up people's communes and turned eight agricultural cooperatives into two big communes. There were over a hundred thousand people in each one. Big communes could handle big projects. With thousands of people to do a job, things were completed in no time. Production brigades were sent where they were thought to be needed most, under military-style discipline. The party said it was a more efficient, better, faster way to build socialism. Private ownership of land had already been eliminated. Now family life was to be destroyed as well. Peasants were to eat food cooked in central kitchens. Children would be looked after together. Mao set the target of doubling food production in one year. Revolutionary enthusiasm, he said, will triumph over all obstacles. He took a close interest as the peasants tried to increase yields. When the Dongsheng commune promised a record harvest, it was Zhen Guadong, the district secretary, who showed the chairman around. Chairman Mao himself visited the show field and asked how much it was expected to yield. My colleague said 50,000 pounds an acre. Chairman Mao replied, even if you could achieve 10% of that, it would be a miracle. Wheat yields had typically been about 500 pounds an acre. Now the party encouraged competition among the communes to push up the yields. Sangwan 5 pledges were absurd, but the communes falsified their records to back them up. We removed the already planted rice from the fields and replanted it in the show field so that we could reach our quota. Planting it so densely with no light or wind blowing through meant it would rot. Before long, the rice did rot, and the peasants got angry. They said, if you take all the rice and waste it, what will we eat in the autumn? The peasants didn't want to go on with this cheating. I tried to get it stopped, but the local boss ordered us to carry on. But the false statistics contributed to a dangerous delusion that China had plenty of food and could concentrate on other things. We must reach for the moon and the stars, said Mao. Man can achieve anything he can imagine.